fixing to go over Wolf Creek Pass. I haven't been here in about a minute. A couple of minutes. It's been a long time. We just left South Fork. spot on that window over there. I'll see if I can wash it off. Got me a fishing hole over here. We used to come out here quite a bit with Sports Authority. But uh, we don't haul for them no more, no more. How many of you guys were thinking hit the road, Jack? <laughs> If I missed you. I did see something cool one time. The creek is right here to the left. This is one of my fishing spots right here. I'd park on the right. Fish right there in the elbow. I saw a mountain lion, and it was back here a ways. He was walking, oh, I get a yawn there. He was walking on the river. It was frozen. And it was, I'll show you kind of right where it was at. Looks like we might hit a little bit of snow up there. The river is uh, open. Open, open, open. Yeah, I just happened to glance down. I was um, eastbound. Which today we're westbound. Westbound and down. I haven't seen any signs for chain laws. I don't think we'll worry about it uh, this way. You don't need them to go downhill. Um, this pass is pretty easy on the east side. It can be pretty hairy on the west side. For sure going down, Wolf Creek Pass is uh, at the very, end, not the very end, but pretty close to the bottom. You have a hairpin to the left, and some trucks have gone straight. Well, it ain't nothing but a cliff if you keep going straight. That guy had a cool attachment on his tractor. He had a snow thrower. blade circulating in it like a blower and I guess it's a blower it throws it up and over and then it 
chain law right here. This is the first time I've seen that chain requirement information. 10 miles to the summit. We're getting close to where I saw that mountain lion. It's up here on these curves and it's down here. I think it was like right in here. You can see it from the eastbound lanes, but oh, what do we got here? Stopping on the highway. Yeah, it was. It was right there where we just started coming into these hills. Balmy degrees right now. Big Meadows Reservoir. Watch for rocks and ice. That's all I see is rocks and ice and snow. I guess the trees. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I have ever done a Wolf Creek Pass. It doesn't matter, we're going to do one, but I just... I don't think I have. I, I always, I thought I had done. There's a lot of passes I haven't done yet. I might do Independence Pass, but I have to do that in my car. I can't do it in the same way. But it's only open in the summertime. So I will have to do that one of these days. There's like no trucks around anywhere coming here. I didn't see anybody on the highway. When we get here, we're surrounded by trucks. about it going downhill you have to do 25 mph and 
one other thing I've noticed too is uh, state troopers are always on this hill or this pass. They're always on the other side though. Light. I think we have 3,000 pounds. I'll double check. Well, that's the industrial. Looks like 3,600 pounds. Pretty much empty. But that is a little bit, it helps, but not much. A yard of concrete weighs 4,000 pounds. This is the pass uh, I first learned with these automatics. Um, I climbed up this way pretty nice. It was nighttime. I climbed up this side pretty decently. No chains or nothing. Didn't have chains on to go downhill. Um, they had bladed it. I've said this story before. I was using my Jake at 20 miles an hour. I thought I was in second position, Jake. I wanted to go third. What I ended up doing was Jack was downshifting it because I was already in third. There's a learning curve on these automatics. And so the truck started to jackknife, so I instantly turned off the Jake, throttled up, got the truck straight, and then was doing 30. <laughs> Finally got it slowed down. And Didn't have to check my shorts, but it was close, I tell you. Avalanche chute right here. They, it looks like they had just bladed it, so it was shiny. And I had like 30,000 pounds of glass bottles. It's a pretty uh, secluded ski resort, though. It's kind of hard to get to. No, not really hard from biggest town is Pagosa Springs and then Durango. So I don't think it would be too terribly crowded. Not like the big ski resorts. There's enough people here though. I don't know what they call this mountain unless it's 
Wolf Creek. There's the barn. See that barn right to the right of us? Uh, Rio Grande National Forest, Wolf Creek. They just call it Wolf Creek. I wish there was like snow on the ground um, to make it tougher. You know, just to you have to do a, a yawning phase there, those straightaways. Not yawning now, but if we had some snow on the ground, I'd be uh, <laughs> wide awake. Of course, we might have it on the west side of the pass. They're pretty animate about the 25 mile an hour speed limit for tractor trailers. Because, you know, it goes down, 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 and then you get closer to the bottom, it drops even more. It goes like, let's say it's a 7%, it goes to an 8 or 9, and then it does a hairpin left. That's why this pass can be uh, treacherous. See right here it says hairpin curve six miles ahead. And that right there, vehicles over 26,000 gross vehicle weight rating, state law 25. And that's where they get you is that hairpin at the bottom, flashers on. The road's just wet, we're light. We could fly down this hill, but yeah, no, we don't do that. We're not gonna be breaking the law, breaking the law. There's a few patches here and there. thing down a bit. They say you could go to that hairpin, look down and see the carnage below. Maybe one day during the summer we can stop by and take a look-see. Yeah, I don't remember exactly where I was on the... Uh, when I was doing 25. Or I was doing 20 and I downshifted. Went into a jackknife. I was kind of on a straightaway. So it is a seven percent. Which is pretty good, pretty decent. I thought it was, but like I said, it had been a while. I'd like to see that this truck here is not using any of his brakes. Neither are we. There's that GVT vehicle that passed me illegally. Uh, government. I don't know if he's a cop or not, but I got him on GoPro for the other channel. I wasn't trying to. I was just filming and he just come flying up. The lines had disappeared. The broken line went to solid double yellow. And of course you could see him just flying right past me.
too slow. Look, Ma, no brakes. See, you you shouldn't, you know, you don't think about it, but it doesn't sound right, I guess, is the way I should say it. You don't use brakes going downhill. And you watch these people hit their brakes all the time. It's different, a four-wheeler, because you don't have the weight, obviously. But if you know what you're doing, you're not going to use your brakes going downhill in a semi-truck. A couple of times you can do that, of course, but you don't want to keep doing it. You'll overheat them and have no brakes. Seven percent next five miles. That's why this pass has such a bad rap. Is uh, um, it's seven percenter, and if people aren't, I'm already doing the speed. What is that saying? Um, People aren't paying attention. They keep using their brakes, and then they end up um, overheating them. Had that sweet spot right there. Kind of tough to find it again. Oops. Wanted to hit the wiper. Hit the Jake. Like it says, you are here. Two ramps and a hairpin. Yeah, it would have been funner on snow. Uh, we still would be doing the exact same thing. I'm still going to go down at 25. Depends on how nasty out it was, or it would, would have been had it been snow packed.
know, like Eisenhower Hill is like seven miles long. And but it's pretty much straight. A lot of it is straight. There's curves here and there, but that one could, I mean, truckers, plus being on the interstate, they're always doing over the 35 MPH. Gain a little bit there. where the hairpin is coming up. And sometimes you can't do 25 down the hill. It depends on your truck and your gearing and stuff and your weight. So sometimes you'll be slower than 25. I know I, on Eisenhower Hill I was going down um, 14 to 10 to 12 mile an hour because the truck had so uh, the gearing that was 80,000 pounds too the, the gearing was so was such that it, it, I couldn't do what I could do in the Volvos I could do take 80,000 pounds down 35 in a Volvo easy with the automatic transmission You just tap the brakes a couple of times, but for the most part, you can go down. But that other, there was an old Peterbilt and it manual transmission, so you couldn't, just couldn't do it. The gear that held was, um, like 10 to 12 mile an hour. He's got his axles slid all the way back. I don't know if he realizes in Colorado, you can do 36 on an axle. The only problem with having your wheels all the way back, it makes turning a lot harder, like a battleship aircraft carrier. Ah, oh, he is going way slow. Was he stopping? <laughs> or at 12 mile an hour? This is where they go straight off the edge, or used to. They got concrete here. What's he doing? Yeah, that's the cliff right there to our right. Go straight out and over. I'm gonna get it while I can get it. Pass him at 18 mile an hour. Thank you, sir. Dude, it's not 25 for you. He's not even doing 25. There he goes. Wrong gear. Surprised we didn't see any state trippers on this hill. It's usually where they're at. Gain a little bit 
of speed here. I'm going to bring it back down. There we go. Yeah, I don't, I, you know, I've never looked to see if there's any videos on Wolf Creek Pass on YouTube. I'm going to take a look, see, I know, I don't know if I've even done any. This is cutting it close there, buddy. Wow. We got this curve and then one more and then we can open it up. There used to be this pass all the time. And I don't think I've, since I started filming, I don't think I actually have ever done Wolf Creek Pass. I'll have to take a look, see. Well, we got it done now, right? <laughs> it would have been better if we could have got snow, but oh well. At least we got it in daylight, right? Flashers off in twenty five. I think we'll end up catching up to that white van that um, with that truck pulled off to the shoulder. That white van was hanging out. I bet we catch up to it. Chain station. Thirty-one balmy degrees out. I didn't think to look how tall it was, or what the tip was up at the top of the pass, or even how tall the pass was. The altitude.
can see it up ahead. <laughs> A couple of mixer trucks, cement mixers. Off to the left there, we just passed. The reason I'd say we catch up to that white van is I could tell by the way he drove. Something just not right about him. We got some nice rainbows and browns over here, just west of Pagosa Springs. It's like a small window to fish it, where you have access to the river. Otherwise, in the summertime, the bushes are so thick you can't get to the water. But this time of year, you can. San Juan River, this is the best fort in the San Juan. See that barn right here to the left. The one up on top of the pass, they just take care of the pass. These guys probably take just this highway here, but how far they go. Squall. I hate it when I'm right. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Yeah, he was just uh, enjoying his Sunday drive on a Wednesday. Doing a 55 and a 65. Had a nice wide stretch, straight stretch where I was able to pass him. Barnwood right there.
down. Little village. So here we come into Pagosa Springs, the world's deepest hot springs, established 1891. This is my little fishing hole right here. I parked the semi to the left. I'm behind this gas station right here, you go down in there. And some nice fish out of there, but I try to do it in summertime and it just doesn't fly. Let it fly, fly fishing specialists. We're already doing 25. The world's deepest hot springs. I never knew about that. I wonder how deep it goes. I need the extra room for this to turn up here. I got a speeding ticket here one time. I was going westbound, or eastbound, the other way. I was coming down this hill, and like the state trooper had followed me for, it was nighttime, he had followed me for, I don't know, 30 miles? They come down this hill a little bit and it got to 30 when it it went to 25 there 
and I was bringing my speed down. I was hitting my brakes, but I wasn't doing 25 where I hit the 25. I think I was doing 27 or 28. He lit me up. I'm like, what did I do wrong? He goes, well, you're speeding. I go, where? He goes, just right here where it went down to 25. I go, I know, I just saw that, and I was bringing my speed down. He goes, yeah, you're supposed to do it before the sign. I go, well, I realize that, but I just saw the sign. Now, I'm not going to write you up for it, but let me see all your stuff, your paperwork and everything, so I give it all to him. And he didn't give me a ticket, but he wrote it on the, uh, what do you call it, the inspection, speeding, and it goes against my CSA score and the company's CSA score, I was just like, dude, I was going to give you a warning, well, give me a warning, but don't write it down. I think I said for me, I'm going to have, if a cop ever says that, give me a warning. I'm going to tell him, just give me a verbal. Can you make it verbal? <laughs> but I haven't had to deal with them since, so I guess that's a good thing. Other than like going through inspections and stuff like that, but And he said, the cop told me, because the reason I know that he followed me for 30 miles, he told me. I go, dude, I've been doing the speed limit for, since I left Durango. He goes, yeah, I was, I've been following you. You actually did pretty good. But when you hit that sign, you're supposed to be doing 25. I'm like, yeah, like I told you, I just saw it. So I knew that he had been back there a while. But it took him 30 miles to pull me over. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing, huh? They're going to pull you over. They're going to do it right away. Okay, we got done with Durango. Got unloaded. And now we are headed to Montrose so we can load up tomorrow in Olathe. This highway is 145. goes uh, like tell you ride to Dolores um, Cortez and stuff I haven't been on this highway in a long 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 time anyway we'll end this video here I'm gonna start another one for tell you ride um, looks like it's snowing up there pretty good get some video of that should be all right 
So with that being said, we'll uh, end this video here. Thanks again for riding shotgun with Metal Man Mike. Until next time, enjoy. Peace. Got these loops in between my fingers. I don't know what the heck they are. Maybe I'll cut them off until I get hung up on something. See ya.